Hi there, working homeschool mom. This is Charlotte from Charlotte Jones 24-7 and My Little Homeschool. And this is episode number 122 of the Striker Balance podcast for working homeschool moms. If you're new here, welcome. I hope you'll find many, many episodes to help you on your working homeschool mom journey. A little bit about me. I'm a coach specifically for new working homeschool moms, and I help you figure out the messy beginning so that you can take your first steps with confidence. So in today's episode, I'm doing something quite different, and it's been so fun to do it. I'm doing an AMA episode where I'm answering three questions from my community, and I've noticed that many of the same questions come up, so I'm sure that these are going to help you as well if you have some doubts, some worries about starting out as a working homeschool mom. But before we get to the episode, I'd be ever so grateful if you could rate, review, or subscribe to the podcast, or you could forward the episode or the podcast to a new working homeschool mom, and I hope that she will feel some support and comfort from listening to it. Thank you so much, and enjoy the episode. Hi there, and welcome to the Striker Balance podcast for working homeschool moms. This is Charlotte Jones. I'm your host, and I am a podcaster, a speaker, a writer, and a homeschooling coach, specifically for working homeschool moms. I've been homeschooling my neurodivergent twin boys since 2017, and I've been a working homeschool mom since 2017. So I know it can feel really overwhelming to keep all the balls in the air all the time. So each week, I chat about tips and strategies for being a happy and thriving working homeschool mom. I cover things like time management, homeschooling, mindset, and lots of other juicy topics like that. I also speak to awesome and inspiring women who manage to juggle homeschooling and work successfully and find out what their secrets are. And I also welcome experts who can help you on your working homeschool mom journey. I have lots of ways to support you, so be sure to check them out in the show notes. You can download my time order as your first step to managing your time better. I have a Facebook group for working homeschool moms that you can join as well. And be sure to sign up to my newsletter for weekly updates. And if you need additional support, you can join the WHM Collective, which is a supportive community of working homeschool moms where we delve deeper into topics that are going to help you thrive as a working homeschool mom. Or if you need one-to-one support, be sure to book in a session with me. I'm so excited for you to be here and I know you'll get so much value out of this episode. So let's get started. Working homeschool mom, I know how overwhelming it can be to choose a math curriculum for your homeschool. That's why I'd like to tell you about the online math curriculum we've been using for years, ctcmath.com. As far as math curriculums go, it has loads of great features that solve lots of the math issues we've had and I know a lot of homeschooling families have. Here are just a few of the many features that we really like. Questions are adaptive, which means the interactive questions change in difficulty depending on the student's ability. The program uses a smart algorithm that tracks the student's progress and delivers questions based on their exact needs. The student doesn't even know this is happening, helping them to build confidence and master math concepts. Concepts are delivered through video tutorials and summaries which are clear, complete and easy to follow. It's like having your very own teacher. This ensures your children understand something before they're asked to practice it. And then for us parents, CTC Math has extensive reports which are so valuable in monitoring your child's progress and spotting any gaps. And they offer a 12-month money-back guarantee if this curriculum is not for you and your family. CTC will provide a full refund, no questions asked. But I think the most important thing is a whole lot less stress when it's math time for both parents and kids. You get to outsource math with confidence and your kids get a fantastic tailor-made program that makes learning and mastering math enjoyable and positive. Visit CTC Math today to start your free trial. CTC Math is also offering you, listener, an amazing special. When you go to ctcmath.com forward slash MLH, you can get a half price discount plus a bonus six months for free. That's ctcmath.com forward slash MLH. So like I said, today is going to be an AMA episode. I so love these episodes, so I'm really excited about answering some of the questions that come up in my community. So the first question comes from Leah, and she's thinking about working in homeschooling. And her biggest question is how to make it work, still having them out of the house 
and taking part in social activities? Great question, Liam. So I think from the get-go, in order to be a successful homeschooler in general, I think it's really important for homeschooling to be a priority for you. It has to be one of your life goals. It has to be one of your priorities. Otherwise, it's going to be really hard to make it work, to be honest. One way that you can make it a priority is to really think about what your why is. Why are you homeschooling? And from my experience, many of the reasons that people are homeschooling are because public school just doesn't work for them. I mean, that was our reason as well. And that has always kept me going. The thought of sending my kids back to public school was enough to help me get through the tough days. So I think in order to make it work, it has to be a priority. So check in with yourself. What is the reason you are homeschooling? Write it down, make sure you have it somewhere, and then go back to it when you are feeling like things are overwhelming or like well, everything is getting too much, which can definitely happen. So another thing to consider, Leah, is de-schooling. And you know I talk about this a lot, but de-schooling is incredibly powerful. It is such a good way to ease into homeschooling in whatever way that looks for you. If you're working and then homeschooling or homeschooling and then working or, you know, there's so many different iterations of being a working homeschool mom. De-schooling is such a powerful tool. It will help you unlearn all the things that you think education should look like. And that can include so many things. It can include like how your kids learn, when they learn, what time, where. I mean, there are so many things that you can unlearn that could potentially hold you back from successfully making it work as a working homeschool mom. And the de-schooling process is also really, really useful for really observing your child, figuring out what lights them up, how they learn, because that's also such a vital part in, in creating a learning environment that's really, really going to work for them. So de-schooling is a must, I think, and it not just once, it can happen multiple times during your homeschooling journey. We've done it many times. So when you feel like you're getting stuck, it might be a time to start de-schooling. And something that I did as well, and I've spoken to many working homeschool moms who have done this, is to kind of consider a change of a period. I am such a big believer in change of a period, especially when you are making a dramatic change. So a change of a period could mean starting slowly to do a little bit of homeschooling in the evenings, over weekends, so everybody can kind of ease into the new way of life. I think it's also such a good way to make a dramatic change. So Leah, when you talk about still having them out of the house and social activities, first of all, I think it's really important to realize that school isn't a better way to socialize. In fact, kids are really kind of put into different groups and they're not really allowed to mix and they're not allowed to talk in class and things like that. It's important to realize that school isn't better for socialization at all. So once you kind of realize this, you can, much like with de-schooling, you can really open up your mind to all the possibilities out there. And they are great possibilities. So online options are definitely great. Kids can join classes. And I think they're just as effective as face-to-face -face options. You can do socialization over weekends because I know sometimes co-ops, if you're working full-time, co-ops can be during the day. So weekends after hours as well is also an option. And if your kids are big enough, they could do some volunteering or even get jobs. I mean, those are great ways to socialize. And also just include your kids in everything you do. I mean, that's what we do. And it's so much natural and organic socialization like that. And if you cannot find a way to socialize them, then you can create your own socialization. I know many people who have created their own groups, who have created their own co-ops. And in that way, you know, they're able to draw people with like-minded people towards them and socialize in that way. So the next question is from Mary, and she's in her first year of being a working homeschool mom. And she asks about the best jobs and how to get them. So I think there is no best job, in my opinion. I think you can fit homeschooling around any job, I believe. So I've done corporate, I've, done, I've worked as a freelancer and a business owner, and I've managed to homeschool during all those three very distinct different types of jobs. So once again, a change of a period, you know, I'm a big believer in a change of a period is a good way to start figuring out how you can include homeschooling while working. 
So if you are working, maybe also to get your partner to lend a hand or ask for help, I think that's really important. And then in terms of finding jobs, I mean, good old Facebook groups, you can't go wrong with a Facebook group. Obviously, just check, you know, make sure you'd pay your due diligence to make sure that it is a decent job. Ask friends, other working homeschool moms, what jobs they have. I think one of the most important elements about working in homeschooling is the mindset. So I did talk about homeschooling being priority. So that is your most important thing. And also accepting that homeschooling might look different. So whatever job you get, it might look different to what other people are doing. So if people are stay-at-home moms and homeschooling, your homeschool is definitely going to look very different. Or if you work shift, you might be homeschooling over weekends or at nights or early in the morning. It's just important to be flexible, to be open, and to find a job at the end of the day that you enjoy a job that you can see yourself doing for a long time. I mean, or you can think about starting a business. I think if you can start a business that is linked to homeschooling, like I've done, it is fantastic. It's such a good way to incorporate your kids into your life. It's a good way to get, you know, free curriculum. It's a good way to think about homeschooling, to become an expert, to be curious about it. And you also are a positive model for your kids as well, which I think is really, really great if you are, you know, if you have a business or a homeschooling business. And then the final question for today is Sonia, who has been homeschooling for two years. And she asks how to fit it all in. And I think it's really important that you see that maybe even after two years, you still feel like you haven't quite found your groove. So I find it's like, Before you start, obviously, it can be quite stressful and messy. And then when you start, it can be super messy. And then those first three years can also be a time of adjustment and figuring it all out. Unless you're really lucky, it's probably not going to happen immediately that everything runs smoothly because you change, your kids change, your circumstances change. And that's why I wanted to include somebody who's already been working in homeschooling for two years and asks how to fit it all in because she might feel like, you know, she hasn't found a groove yet. All right. So Sonia, I think the first thing to keep in mind is that you probably can't fit everything in. Isn't it Oprah who said you can do anything, but you can't do everything at the same time, something like that. And that is so true. So you need to make sure you know what's really important to you. What are the non-negotiables? And what are things that are maybe put on you by other people that you can maybe let go of? I think that's also really important. What are your life goals? What are your priorities in life? What's really, really, really important to you? And be intentional about it. Be explicit about it. Write it down. You know, take some time. Dig deep. Really think about it. Is it really important? This is my favorite example. If you've been here, you know. Is it really important to have a spotless house all the time? Because I can tell you it takes a lot of time to do that. And especially if you have lots of people at home, it can be hard to keep your house really, really tidy. But if that's your priority, absolutely. But something else will probably need to go. A good way to figure this all out, to see where your time actually goes is a time audit. And it's such powerful information when you actually know how you spend your time, because then those decisions that you make, you can make them with data to prove why it's, you know, not a good idea. So for example, cleaning, I remember I used to clean every Saturday and it would take eight hours or something like that. And I was like, um, no, this is, I mean, surely there are better ways to, <laughs> to spend eight hours of my weekend. So then I decided to split it up, you know, over each day, which made it a little bit easier. And then I finally said, please, I need help. And I got somebody to come and help me to clean. So That information, that data is really going to help you to make informed decisions about how you spend your time. And in terms of homeschooling, there are ways to reduce the amount of time without losing effectiveness, without it being less effective. Because homeschooling, obviously, if you're working, usually working is not as flexible as homeschooling. So you can get homeschooling to fit around, you know, the non-negotiable things that you need to do. So Year-round homeschooling, you know, I talk about it a lot. Year-round homeschooling is a great way to do that. You can reduce the amount of homeschooling you do every day. You can outsource your homeschooling, co-ops, online, tutor. There's no shame in outsourcing your homeschooling at all. And just realize that learning happens all the time. So if you're including your kids in what you do, 
doesn't even have to be fancy field trips, but if they are included in your life, if they are given opportunities to read lots of books, they are going to be learning and learning and learning all the time. Kids love learning. They're curious. Book learning is just a small part of homeschooling. The rest of the learning is also super, super important and really, really powerful as well. And then, as I said before as well, just checking in with yourself regularly because sometimes you're like, oh, yes, I'm fitting everything in. And then the next week, nothing fits in. So, you know, are you getting enough self-care? Are you getting enough rest? Are there some things that are not serving you anymore? So I think it's really important to check in regularly with yourself that your schedule is still working for you. So those are my three questions, my AMA questions for this week. This has been lots of fun. I'm definitely going to do this again. If you have any questions, please reach out. You can reach out on Instagram, Charlotte Jones 24 7 or you can send me an email, hello at mylittlehomeschool.com. So I would love to answer your questions and let me know what your struggles are. What are things that you are worried about as a new working homeschool mom or a working homeschool mom in the first three years? What are your struggles? Where do you need some support? And as always, I'm here if you need one-on-one support. If you really just want to get it out, if you need some guidance for real transformational change, then be sure to book in a coaching session with me. I really hope you enjoyed the episode. Please let me know what your greatest takeaway was. You can reach out to me on Instagram at charlottejones247 or on my website at mylittlehomeschool.com or you can even drop me an email at hello at mylittlehomeschool.com. I'd be ever so grateful if you could rate, review and subscribe to the podcast. It will help spread the news about being a working homeschool mom and in that way we can build this wonderful supportive community together thank you so much for listening and until next time take care